Thanks, everyone. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Can you read this? Yes. Okay, great. Otherwise, I have a great referral code for an eye clinic here in Stockholm. So, uh, Before I start my talk, I just want to give a big round of applause to the previous speakers. I think it's been great tonight. So. Yeah, uh, my name is Joel Rangsmo. I work as a security consultant for a very nice company here in Sweden called Centaur. Uh, we will have a, a little place uh, down here at Stacken during the conference where you can come and eat uh, mute glass and play some Super Bomberman 2. So if you're up for that, just come and join us. Uh, I spoke at uh, the Sektia Spring Pub two years ago. and. Uh, I tried to make people realize that defensive security can be sexy. So I showed some nice Linux hardening stuff, but uh, I since then realized that resistance is futile. So tonight I will try to show you a new way to break broken stuff, which uh, I hope that you will appreciate. Uh, I will talk about two projects. Uh, these projects have in, been in the working for quite some time. Mentally, at least, code-wise, not so much. So I really felt like I wanted to get it done. So I do as I always do when I need to learn something. I sign up to have a presentation about it at <laughs> a conference or something. So uh, I'm, I'm very good. Uh, for me, uh, deadlines are a very good motivation. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I do in my daytime job is security testing. And whenever you do like a pen test of uh, infrastructure, so you're in a inside of a network, you can always rely on Metasploits. Uh, we saw it earlier in the presentation. It's so nice. There are modules there that you can use without even realizing what the exploit is, for good and bad. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but something that's always nagged me is that we don't really have the same thing for web application exploits. So when we do web app tests, we find cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery and uh, uh, cross-site uh, WebSocket hijacking vulnerabilities all the time. And my idea was basically, can you combine these two things? Because right now, in the CV tracker, there are about 15,000 tracked cross-site scripting and request for their attacks and uh, or, uh, vulnerabilities. And many of these are probably lame, and some might be tricky to exploit, but there are probably some good stuff there. And also a lot of stuff that's probably not even tracked. So my idea was to find a way to package these uh, exploits for these vulnerabilities so that they could be reused for uh, red teams and whoever not. So to you guys, I don't have any nice uh, GIFs, but I do have ANSI art. OK, so as I said, these are really two separate projects, but uh, they're very intermingled, so to speak. Uh, yeah, so there are two, two projects. KCross is the first one. It's a bit like Metasploit. I will show a demo of it soon. Uh, and this basically gives you an interface or a Python module or uh, a scripting language uh, to use these exploits. So if you're in a pen test, for example, and you see that, well, they have, uh, they have a Juniper firewall, and that has a shitty web interface, and they have an, one old unpatched Confluence server somewhere in the back, you could search for those kind of things and find exploits and hopefully uh, get someone to interact with them so you can exploit them. Uh, the next one I call XS Exploits here, and it's basically a YAML-based uh, format to package these vulnerabilities. So the idea is that I don't want to go the Metasploit route by uh, keeping the, the exploit modules and the tooling in one thing. So if you don't like my shitty Python free code, then you can go and use these exploit modules in your Go program or whatever. So it's to make it more appealing to write these kind of modules, because you can expect some kind of lifetime for them, even if my tool doesn't work out. 
so I will show a quick demo of uh, the CLI interface. This backing this CLI interface is a Python free module, as I said, but this is probably what most people are going to interact with. Uh, it's a quite nice CLI, in my opinion. We have a different kind of commands. Uh, we have auto completion and some nice argument handling. Uh, in KCross, uh, most things uh, circle around what's called an instance and what's called a campaign. So a campaign, you could think of it as a, a project. And this is where you uh, configure different exploits and different payloads and different templates. I will try to get into that a bit more if I have time. And you add them to this project. So it could be like a uh, hack the big bank, bank again project or whatever. And they're called campaign here. Uh, so yeah, so what I've done now in the demo, I've loaded a campaign that I've already created called Hack Universum, because Hack the Planet is not enough. Uh, and this is a campaign that I've been working on a bit earlier. So I've actually already added some stuff to this. I've added a template. And this template, uh, it will basically take all the exploits that I configure and render them out to uh, a HTML page or whatever the template is built to do. So like how you will produce the end results. I've also added one uh, exploit already to this uh, campaign. And it's a uh, Nagios exploit, to a cross-site scripting exploit. So here we basically see the name and also the instance ID. And this is because you could have more exploits of the same kind in the same crusade. Uh, so that's how you differentiate them. Uh, next thing, uh, we will go looking for some more exploits. So we've done a scan of the systems. We have done some web application fingerprinting. We know that they have a confluence. We said for vulnerabilities there. Maybe not so fun to update post permissions. That won't get us far. But here we have another exploit that might be get used here. It's a cross-site request forgery exploit. And the description says that you can use this exploit, uh, ex exploit functionality to add user. And that sounds good, because we know that this barfoo application is keeping all the, the juicy meat together at this organization. So we'll add that. And here is one of the places where I haven't been able to add auto completion yet. It's in the works. And what you see here is basically a config uh, configuration screen. So on the top, it might be a bit hard to see now because we don't have super great resolution. But it's basically a table of all the metadata. And that's like arbitrary things that you can define for the module. So you can search it. Or if you want to build a nice web UI, you could present it there. And then we also have options. And in this table, we can see that we have four options to configure. And all of them are required. So we go ahead. Uh, not super complicated syntax. We just set the options. And since this is a quite neat shell, we could also use like cell search history. So if you would do like, uh, I don't know, R host or set global in Metasploit, this is quite similar to build it efficiently. We could also use the preview feature, uh, which if you don't really know much about this tool, might not make sense. But this is like, a, if I would render this exploit now, what would the results look like? So if you just want to dabble with it a bit. So we're satisfied with that. We will save it and add it to our campaign. And I will also give you a quick peek at one of these XS modules, what's actually powering this. So. In my opinion, this is a quite straightforward JAML structure. So if you can read JAML, you could use these. And one difference between this and Metasploit module is that unless you have a, an exploit in the JAML parser, uh, or if you're a bad human and use YAML load instead of safe unload, which you should never do, uh, load and you don't have an exploit for the templating engine, then it should be somewhat OK to use random module definitions from people around the internet. But 
don't quote me on that, but the idea is basically put these in a collaborative Git uh, repo on GitHub, which I've done, and you could, uh, well, you could update it and fill, fill these. So the, these modules are independent of the, the K cross tool. So if we look at the top, uh, we have some module metadata, just arbitrary things. You could put in whatever you want. What you do need to do is define a module type, a name, and a description. And I will get back to that in a bit. Next up is options. And these are basically things we expect the user to configure or allow the user to configure. So in this case, it's an email, because we're going to exploit the user add functionality. So we need to specify an email address. We said that it's a string and that it's required. You might have noticed that we had some, four, uh, some more options when I show you the exploit configuration before. And that's because uh, a module can inherit options from its type. So in this case, it's of the type CSRF get. And if it's of that type, then we know that we will need a, a protocol, a host, a port, etc. Uh, and then we have constraints. And these are basically ways to, to limit what the configuration, uh, what the user can do while configurating. So here it says that the, the email address can't be longer than 25 characters. But this could also be something like you can't include this specific character in the payload because then everything will go bananas. Uh, next up is the templating part. Uh, this is built on a templating engine called Jinja2, which is very nice. Uh, it allows you to do uh, some logical templating. And in this example, uh, for the template property here, it's basically when we put all the options together, we will render this. But then we can also do some neat stuff, like in the case of the email here, we can do URL encode. So it's nice. The only quirk about this, which I'm not sure quite right how to handle now is that Genia 2, it's available for Python, it's primarily Python. They've implemented it for uh, uh, Node.js or JavaScript. And there's also some work on a Golang port. But if you guys know of any somewhat logical templating language that's more cross-platform, I would love to hear about it. Uh, the same thing goes down here for that instance ID, and that's ba basically how will we differentiate this exploit from other exploits of the same kind in a campaign. Oh, we better send. We better have the same. Okay, uh, I'm out of time. I need to wrap out, uh, but first I will just uh, go forward a bit and show you the results. So. You add your uh, exploits to your campaign, you render it, and we will get some nice output. So this is basically the results of our, of our hard work. And now you could put this HTML file up on a web server. You could iframe it. You could send it in phishing links. And uh, hopefully, people will click on it or interact with it. And you can get your UC admin users. So just to wrap up, since I'm out of time, uh, I would love to talk more about this, if you think it's a bad idea, if you think it's a good idea. If you find exploits, what kind of features would you like in this uh, exploit defining structure? Uh, and also some links to my GitHub profile. And I want to give a quick plug to my company center. It's a really fun place to work at, so check that out. And that is the end. <laughs>